Let's begin with a from the gut guess. Big gut, big guess. You haven't spent very much time during your working life thinking about how much money inmates are making. It's hard to care about things like this when you're busting your hump to make ends meet. So it's time to bust out of the politically correct prison, which asks questions like, do you think Paul Bernardo makes a fair wage while working at the prison library? Let's bust out of this criminal values jail and offer up some Canadian common sense. Yep, we're now told that Canada's most infamous serial rapist and murderer, Paul Bernardo, will be getting a pay cut next April. You likely didn't even know he was getting paid to sit in prison for the rest of his life. Prisoner advocates say he isn't just sitting, he's got a job in the prison library where he gets $7 a day. And it's unfair for the government to cut his pay by 30%, something the government is doing across the board in Canada's prisons, saving a little more than 5 million tax dollars in the process. Hey, 5 million, that's real money. Now, there are many things I've gotten to know about you since we started doing these nightly visits a couple of years ago. And one of the things I think I know about you is that you do not believe that the question, do you think Paul Bernardo makes a fair wage? It's a very intelligent question. It may be a highly politically correct question on the assumption that Bernardo is a human being just like the rest of us. Deserves to make a fair buck for what he does. But please, he's not a human being like the rest of us. People we think of as human don't stalk, rape, torture, murder women. That's what he did, along with his accomplice Carla Homolka, who basically got away with it. Got a relatively short sentence for helping the Crown put away her husband. This country has paid Carla a very high price for her work in testifying against Paul Bernardo. The victim's families, and they have names, Mahaffey, French, and Hamolka. Yes, Carla's sister Tammy was one of those who the Ken and Barbie murderers did away with. These victims, these victims' families, have paid too high a price for Carla's freedom. And these families have paid too high a price for the incarceration of Bernardo. Here's what's unfair. It costs about a thousand bucks a week to keep Bernardo in jail. In our idea of a just society, the SOB would have been executed a long time ago. We wouldn't be paying a dime, and we wouldn't be worrying about whether or not the government is cutting his pay by a toonie per day. Who honestly is going to lose any sleep over this? Of course, you've got your prisoner advocates who say that not everyone in prison is a Bernardo. True, not everybody is. But it seems just about everybody in prison has done something rather serious to get there. I say that because over half the people charged with crimes never go to jail, and the system goes out of its way to keep criminals out of jail. And if they do go in, the system then goes out of its way to give them light sentences to get them back out as soon as possible so they can do it again. Even after they've served, what, two-thirds of these light sentences, there's a very good chance they'll be released on parole. It seems to me our taxpayers are giving inmates too good a deal. Now, yesterday we discussed the Gordon Stuckless case. This was the Maple Leaf Gardens monster who's connected now to the rapes of nearly 100 boys. And who knows how many there really were. Most don't come forward. It's not known how many rapes he did. He didn't just rape each boy one time. When he was sentenced in connection with the rape of more than two dozen, he got two years. That's, that was his so-called sentence. Two years, less a day. Why are we talking about whether or not it's fair to cut the pay of people like Gordon Stuckless? Have they been fair with their victims? Have they been fair with the public? Have they been fair to our country? I mean, seriously, what does our country owe these people anyway? We give them free room and rent. Do you get that? The majority of people in this country worry about ensuring that their families get three squares a day and a roof over their heads. Why should they care about whether murderers, rapists, pedophiles, drug dealers get a so-called fair wage in jail? We owe them that much. The fact that we even give them nearly seven bucks a day is seven too much. The work they do, by the way, is voluntary. They don't, they don't have to work. And that, to me, is being unfair to the country. They should be forced to work, to do some sort of work that is of some benefit to Canada, the country they stole from. I mean, who's kidding who here? Is there any kind of work or amount of work Paul Bernardo or Gordon Stuckless or Russell Williams or Michael Rafferty could possibly do to restore the lives of their victims, to restore joy to their victims' families? Prisoner advocates tell us that paying prisoners is a good 
idea and paying them a good wage in prison is a good idea because it'll help them readjust to society. What kind of insanity is that? I mean, seriously, once again, how stupid do these advocates think we are? Readjust to society? Most of these people are maladjusted. That's why they're there. Wires are crossed. Something called empathy for other human beings? Missing. So whether you give them seven bucks a day or seven thousand dollars a day, what's missing is not going to suddenly reappear. Just like their victims. They're gone. Let's not incarcerate ourselves in the jail of political correctness. That's Canadian common sense.